here we have these issues. So, okay, so welcome to this um, presentation. And uh, yeah, so we can go next slide, please. Um, that what I'm gonna just talk about is really and truly uh, this, uh, what is a ghost note, right? Um, yeah, so this, this presentation is entitled Ghost Notes. And uh, for those of you that are un unfamiliar with uh, what a ghost note is in terms of uh, music, it is a musical note with no rhythmic value, uh, with a rhythmic value actually, but no discernible pitch when played. So this is really and truly um, no, no melody, which I thought quite fitting for, um, for this topic, right? Um, so we, we're talking about the, the, state of, the status of a few species of seed eaters, um, the sporophyllia um, seed eaters, in Trinidad and Tobago, and there are nine species in total. And so, what we'll do is to go through um, to go through these nine nine species and really talk on what happened and uh, what possibly has happened, uh, what can maybe be done in the future. So, first of all, um, we have the the large billed seed finch. So, next slide, please. And this is one of the larger ones, and it used to be um, uncommon across Trinidad. And for, for those of you who have the a naturalist year, I think that this, uh, there's a really nice and emotive short story in it about the last toa toa. Um, usually this, these birds are seen in pairs. And uh, of course, they are now no longer, no longer found here. All right. So... Um, what I'd like you all to do is to also um, pay attention to these illustrations um, because I'm going to have a few pictures coming up soon that will um, maybe do a little quiz and see if you all can ID these seed eaters. So, yeah, so next slide, please. Right, so this is what we used to call uh, the Tobago Pico Blatt and was not found on Trinidad, but it was found on, on Tobago, right? Um, it was an uncommon, um, but very localized resident of um, hilly areas on Tobago. So um, it should be, should be noted here that this is not a bird of, of the grasslands or, or bird of, of the plains, that um, the significance of this will come to uh, shortly. So yeah, next next slide, please. This uh, the sorry, the wing bird seed eater is also another one that's no longer found here, right? Um, slate colored seed eater. Yeah, so the slate, slate colored um, seed eater here. Um, it was another. It's it's another one that is no longer found here, right? It used to be uncommon, and it's interestingly enough. Um, if, if you can go back to the slate colored, please. Right. So, you know, like in, in terms of finding out early ornithologists, when they came here, were really trying hard to figure out what is, what exactly was going on and to ascertain this, the population status of many of these species. All right. And the, the, for the slate colored seed eater, no one noted any nesting or breeding behavior. So ornithologists thought that, hey, well, these are either vagrants or just wanderers or maybe migrants from South America. Um, but in working closely with, um, with, with local bird fanciers, as they like to be called, um, or bird catchers, um, the, the bird catchers claim that this species was resident and, um, and breeding, actually, in Trinidad. But from, a, from the perspective of the uh, ornithologists, this has never been proven. And locals used to call it um, Brazilian. All right, so yeah, next slide, please, Liz. Uh, yeah, so moving on to one of the smaller ones, uh, Lesson Seed Eater, um, used to be locally common and also, um, it used to, it was a resident here, right? I should say it was a locally common resident. So that means that it was breeding here um, across Trinidad and Tobago, as well as on Monos Island, 
right? And this uh, was conspecific with the line CD tear for many years, and they were recently split. Um, and more recently also is that this species has no longer been um, breeding in Trinidad uh, or Tobago, right? Sightings here uh, of austral migrants or migrants from South America. And the local names for this bird uh, include chat and none. The next slide, please. All right, thank you. Um, the line seed eater, which is which form part of that same um, complex as a lesson seed eater, uh, was also locally common. Uh, also used to breed on Trinidad and Tobago, but now no longer does so. And any sightings now are uh, of again migrants from the the mainland, mainland South America. All right, um, next slide, please. And this, this should be a very uh, familiar bird to many of us. Um, the gray seed eater was very common uh, across both Trinidad and Tobago and was described by Richard French as the most popular of the small finches, right? Uh, locally known as picoplat. Um, they were prized from a very, very long time ago um, by by cage bird uh, fanciers, right? For obviously for their sweet song. What I wanted to do uh, for this presentation was actually to um, to embed the calls of these of these um, seed eaters, but given the logistical nightmare, as you all would have um, enjoyed, <laughs> I don't think I think it's a good idea that I ended up running out of time to do this. Um, but yeah, um, it's a very sweet song, and uh, you know I invite you all to go on Zenocanto, x e n o c a n t o dot com, and uh, and check out the the calls of these of these species. All right, the gray seed eater, even though it was common um, at the time when uh, with the first publication of of a guide to the birds of Trinidad and Tobago, the population was already in steep decline. All right, so next slide, please. The yellow-bellied seed eater is, um, was formerly common, um, but unlike many of the other seed eaters, it still persists in very isolated pockets in certain parts of Trinidad, right? Um, they were also found on the, on, on the Bocas Islands, and uh, I've been looking for them on Shaka Shakari recently with, with no luck, all right? Um, but yeah, you, you can still find, find populations, very small populations of this, of this bird, at least in the Northern Range, right? Um, but, you know, sightings of species like the gray seed eater that I just spoke about, um, those are more than likely escapees. Um, the yellow bellied seed eater is also called silver beak locally, right? If anyone knows of any other local names for these birds, please let me know in the chat. Please let all of us know. Uh, next slide, please. And um, yeah, so the, one of the smallest of our seed eaters, right? As you can tell from its Latin name there, uh, is a ruddy breasted seed eater. And just like the yellow, yellow bellied seed eater, this is another bird that still persists in isolated pockets, um, at least in Trinidad, right? I'm not sure about Tobago. I remember there being um, a very, very sizable population close to by the airport in Crown Point. But um, it's been many years since any have been uh, seen there. Right, uh, and to quote from again from that first edition of the um, the guide to the birds of Trinidad and Tobago, it is by far the most common in Trinidad, for it is rarely caged, even though it is more accessible than the other species, and it is noted to be least likely to suffer local extinction. Well, uh, yeah, things have changed from 1973. Right, it was a time when this um, tiny bird, locally called robin. Um, was quite abundant, 
right? And I just want to make a quick point here about um, the name Robin, right? And uh, it's, you know, it, it's something that, that, that has been um, transplanted here from, from the other side of the ocean. Of course, we have no Robins here. <clears throat> and uh, even, even species like the American uh, Robin, right? Um, it's, uh, you know, when, when people came here and, and colonized the, the new tropics and the new world, uh, according to them, they, they brought their knowledge with them. And uh, it is something that in identifying specific birds, um, you know, it, it brings with it um, an idea of the bird and what is the bird possibly um, deserving of our attention for. Right. Um, so yeah, it's also called red breast um, for obvious reasons. Um, but you know, let's just think about these things sometimes. For example, um, the pale vented pigeon, which is not a seed eating bird or a songbird at, at all, but it's called ramie, and ramie is of course French for wood pigeon, which is um, very often hunted in Europe. Right. And when people came here. They brought this kind of um, ideology that is associated with certain species with them, right? And then taught um, others what what we can um, put our attention to, and for what reason. All right. So anyway, I digress. So yeah, moving on to the next slide, please. Uh, this is this is probably one of the more familiar ones as well, um, for the reason being that it is the most commonly kept cage bird, right? Um, it used to be widespread resident, um, but uncommon on Trinidad, right? So while it would not have been associated with huge flocks, for example, like the ruddy-breasted seed eater, this being one of the larger seed eating birds, um, usually kept to, um, you know, small numbers so maybe uh, pairs and small groups right it's also called bullfinch and cheeky chong um, by some people some uh some others also call it bullfinch but that's uh that's a matter of you know another conversation all right um so yeah so these are the nine species of of seed eaters that that um that used to be um, pretty you know fairly abundant on Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. Some of the larger species, of course, like the chest and bellied seed finch and the large bill seed finch were um, uncommon, right? But still widespread. All right, so here now uh, we'll go on to doing some, um, some, oh yes, I'm seeing a ring neck for yellow bellied seed eater, that is true, right? Um, so yeah, so I'll show you some pictures now and you can let me know um, if you have any idea of which species they are. So this first one, there are a couple that may come to mind, right? But it is uniform gray. There's no visible um, white on the belly or white on the shoulders which would indicate another species, right? This one is a picoplat or gray seed eater. So I'm assuming that everyone would have, uh, would have probably known this by now. This wasn't much of a challenge. So yeah, we can move on to the next one. And uh -huh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people know this one. Yeah. So I'm seeing bullfinch and bullfinch. Yes, this is um, chestnut bellied seed finch. And as I was talking about the ruddy breasted seed eater earlier, um, bullfinch is a Eurasian species of bird that has a um, moderately similar uh, coloration 
to this um, chest and belly seed finch. Of course, if it was a, a completely dark bird, it would have been a different story, right? Um, but yeah, the dark bill and the chest and underbelly, and you know, there's a small white patch on the wing that you can see um, usually when the bird flies or flaps its wings for some reason. All right, this one just as a great seed eater was um, before it is more than likely an escaped bird that I saw on the photograph. All right, so yeah, next slide, please. This one should be easy. Mm -hmm. Roddy breasted seed eater, locally called Robin. Right, this of course is a male, and male seed eaters are very a lot easier to identify than females. All right, females are the, the, the differences are much, much more subtle. So yeah. Um body breasted seed eater. So moving on to the next one, please. Uh -huh. Let me see if anyone has can get to guess this one. I'm seeing young silver beak. Mm, well, let's okay. So this is a female bird. All right. And yes, I'll admit that this is a little bit difficult. So can we move to the next slide, please? And I'll show you her, I'll show you her mate. So this is a male of the species that I just showed you. So does this uh, make it any clearer? So look, look carefully here at this bird's overall dark uh, black plumage and a very clean white breast. And if you look carefully at the crown, there is a white stripe going from the top of its beak straight through um, the crown of its head. So yes, you all are right. It is a lime seed eater. All right, so this is a male. The one before was a female. Um, so let's try again. Let's go, let's go on forward. Forward ever, backward never. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I claim I claim no responsibility for any um, any headaches arising from this short quiz. This is another female seed eater. All right, and I actually have her mate coming up next. So let's go next, and we'll see if it makes things a little easier. So for those of you all who said chat before, this might seem to be yet another chat, but it is not the same species as before. This is a lesson seed eater, right? So note, um, even though it's, yes, it's still a black and white bird, there is some, um, some speckling, some black kind of speckling on the, on the front, which you can kind of see on the side of the bird. And we don't have that white crown stripe that's going from the beak straight over the, the top of the head. All right. Okay, so this is, yeah, so this is a lesson seed eater. Um, moving on. There we go. This is another, this is another, um, this is another female seed eater. Any guesses as to what it is? And if uh, for those of you uh, with certain discerning eyes, there is um, it's feeding on a special grass that uh, many people go and get. They harvest this grass to get um, to take for their birds in cages. All right, this one. 
this one is a female ruddy breasted seed eater, I believe. And finally, I'm sure we know this one. Any guesses? Silver beak, silver beak, yellow bellied seed eater. That's what I'm. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But also called ring neck, right? Yellow bellied seed eater. Right. Another bird of the other beautiful. Another beautiful song. So okay. So moving on from this. Um, all of these species, or well, most of these species, just um, you know, it it might seem like they disappeared just, just like that. Um, the name of the grass, I don't know if there's anyone who knows what the the name of the grass is. Um, please, please uh, let us let us know in the chat. Um, I knew it at some point in time, but I can't recall. All right, so um, now this whole thing. Um, the fact is that some of you would remember this um, this magazine, right? Uh, many people were sounding this alarm as to say, you know, telling telling the authorities, hey, um, there there are these songbirds that are disappearing drastically from our landscape, and we need to do something about it, right? And actually, in this um, in this um, issue of the Naturalist magazine in uh, March, April, 1984, uh, this, this outlined what, how dire the situation was. And at that point in time, it was eight species, uh, not nine, because the line and lessons were still a single species. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a really lovely article on the vanishing cage birds. And actually uh, a memorandum was submitted to the government at that point and detailing a plan of action to halt this uh, this local extinction, right? And a really, really um, substantial educational campaign was outlined that would garner public support for this cause. Um, you know, targeting everyone from the police service to girl guides and boy scouts, everyone, you know, for newspaper, lectures, uh, forestry division, Everyone wanted to. Everyone was supposed to be involved. Now, um, I was. I must admit that that was before I was born, so I can't tell you for certain what happened. But at the point of time when this was published, um, there had been no response from the government, right? And as was noted in some of the other literature, um, that authorities felt that it was too. Um, too trivial of a cause to warrant serious attention, right? Um, but of course, amidst all the warnings that took place, the, the populations continued to fall. And presently we are without much of these species. All right, so yeah, so next slide, please. The question must be asked as to why. All right, some people saying that it's trapping and some people saying that it's the government that was spraying all of the pesticides on the fields. Um, the seed eaters used their habit, right? So they say, well, it is, it's all the spraying with the, the crop dusters used to come, come down and they used to spray the, the crops and so on. And that was what res was responsible for the decline in the populations of these, of these um, seed eaters. All right, and now I can confirm that, yeah, over, over 50 different chemicals were sprayed on the sugar and rice fields. And some of these chemicals were incredibly toxic um, in, in very small doses. So some of them were, were toxic in, in large doses. So if you ingest a little bit, well, you as in a bird would ingest a little bit, then um, nothing would happen, but others, um, even a, a grain sized capsule of these things was enough to to kill to kill uh, several birds all right um, and a number of these chemicals that we use in our fields now are like are banned in other countries all right 
so yeah, I I I would I would definitely um, say that yes, there there were there were a lot of harmful chemicals being sprayed on the sugar and the rice fields, right? Um, however, there are a couple of different things that we need to consider, right? Apart from the fact that you know, as in various editions of the Guide to the Birds of Trinidad and Tobago, that was the first one published in 1973, and then subsequent editions um, looked at the situation um, in a different way, chronologically speaking. You know, ornithologists noted that, hey, well, hey, what the populations of the large billed seed finch have already gone because we've noticed that people have been trapping them using, um, using glue right hey we've noticed that the populations of gray seed eaters aren't what they used to be right because we've noticed people that are trapping them and then remember that ubiquitous um, seed eater ruddy breasted seed eater it was everywhere um in in really really large flocks um the trinidad naturalist article highlighted the use of mist nets that people were using right and i personally was um i was birding at a wetland in south trinidad sometime maybe last year year before and i met a man who had a cage with a ruddy breasted seed eater in it and he asked me if i knew what it was and i said well yeah it's yeah it's a ruddy breasted seed eater and he's like nah is a robin so i said okay yeah of course of course it's a robin and he proceeded to tell me that they used to they used to trap these birds by the hundreds and he pointed to the one of the fields that was right nearby he said we used to trap these birds all the time we used to run nets and we used to get them and then he's looking at the looking at his bird in the cage and looking at the at the wetland and saying well now we don't get them again, right? Um, so maybe maybe the trapping had something to do with it, or maybe it's pesticides. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so let's um, let's move on to the next slide, please. Something that we have to consider is that there are many different birds that have the same dietary requirements and the same habitats. As, as other birds that, that, are, that are now no longer here, right? Yet these, these species um, these, these species still exist and some of them exist in large number, all right? So further to that, there are also, remember I told you about the Tobago Pico Plat, wingbird seed eater. I was a resident of hilly areas on Tobago. Now that was not included in the habitat that was sprayed. Right, so definitely spraying could not have been a, a factor in that species disappearance, right? So too was like species like the large bill seed finch, which was a bird of forest edge, right? Um, and not always open fields, all right? So um, these two birds that are here, they both eat seeds and they both occupy similar habitats. Do you all know what these species, what these birds are? because I did not label the pictures because I, I, I plan to ask you if you know what species they are. Some people call them canary, yeah. Saffron finch on the left and grassland yellow, grassland yellow finch on the right. Mm -hmm. So, so um, can we move on to the next slide, please? All right, so we have a, we have a trio of uh, grass squids here that occupy different habitat. Um, we have from, from left to right, three different uh, species of grass squids, um, both all of them eat seeds. Some of them occupy um, scrub habitat, some occupy grassland habitat, some occupy forest habitat. All right. Um, but they would have shared the same habitat as many of these seed eaters. Now, of course, these three, um, and again, I'll ask you if you can identify any of these three or all of these three, 
from left to right on the left side we have someone that's very familiar should be uh, for for all of us that is our yep blue black grass squid on the left sooty grass squid in the middle and on the right we have our black faced grass squid black faced grass squid is of course found on tobago not on trinidad except for some of the Bocas Islands, All right? So if you go down the islands, you will see black-faced grass squid, but on mainland Trinidad, you will not see it, All right? So, yeah, so, you know, that there's something that all of these birds that I've been uh, talking about recently in this slide and the saffron finch and the grassland yellow finch that they all have in common, right? And collectively, they differ from all of the other birds that have been extirpated. And can anyone tell me what that is? I'll take it, I'll hydrate myself in the meanwhile. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yes, Jerome, none of these birds sing well, right? So, here's the situation right they're not kept in cages sure but why right because we always have to question why are things the way that they are all right we have a bunch of species that are no longer here and we have a bunch of other species that are still here in abundance and the species that are still here in abundance they occupy the same habitat, the same ecological niche as the ones that are gone. The only difference being is that the ones that are still here do not possess a musical song, right? And the ones that are gone have a wonderful musical nature, right? To their, to their song, all right? So, I mean, you could just imagine how, how the, the soundscape would have been had we had our slate of uh, nine sporophyllous seed eaters, all right? Um, so yeah, so let's, let's go on, please. Next slide, right. So this brings me to another, another point, right? We have now, because we have some of these species that are gone now, right? We have a, a vacant niche now, right? In our various habitats that um, you know, it opens the door for certain introduced species, right? For example, this one here, the bird in the middle is a non-native or invasive uh, village weaver, right? And this bird is another one that eats seed and it's here it is feeding alongside a bunch of native species and um, native um, yellow-hooded blackbirds, right? And we have, we have several introduced species that are occupying the same um, ecological niche as our native seed eaters did, right? And now none of these actually have, um, none of these have a musical song, right? And I'll tell you what, so next slide, please. Some of these species, uh, like this, for example, tricolored munia, some of you all may have seen these in pet stores as well, right? So these, um, along with some others, common wax bills. So, and I think the next slide has a few common wax bills in it. These, these guys are taken over, right? They've, uh, a lot of them have been imported here via the pet trade and some people have released them. There've been accidental releases, but the fact is none of these birds sing as well as our native seed eaters. All right, um, and the species like this, uh, like this common waxbill, uh, as well as the tricolored munia, they're breeding, they're reproducing. We also have different uh, munia species like uh, scaly breasted and chestnut, you know, um, and don't even, don't even get started on the topic of uh, invasive um, parrots and stuff like that. But anyway, that's a whole other, a whole other situation. Right now we're talking about birds that eat seeds specifically right uh, and birds that occupy the same niche as our native so native um cd ting songbirds all right um so next next slide please another one we have is the the house sparrow and i remember some of these that came across um on 
container ships. And uh, I think Forestry Division did a lot of work in, in helping to sadly exterminate um, the population of, of house sparrows on the on the west coast because once they once they get a hold and they start reproducing they uh they can be quite virulent right and now you see if our native species seed eater species were still established and still had a, a good grip on their ecological niche it wouldn't be that huge of a problem but with uh with with food and resources and the territory just waiting to be to be conquered and, and no one to claim it these introduced species are having an easy, easy life. Uh, so next slide, please. All right, so the question must be asked, what about the law, right? So the law is essentially is saying that no one, no one has, um, no one should trade or, or, you know, or offer for trade any kind of cage bird during the close season, right? And anyone who has a cage bird must also possess a permit issued by the chief game warden. All right, so I, this is from what I understand. Um, if anyone knows, is more familiar with the Conservation of Wildlife Act, um, please, please let me know, All right? But, um, but from what I understand, the seed eaters may be traded legally during, um, during the open seasons. All right, so if we can understand that Many of these seed eaters are now no longer found in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, where are they coming from, right? Uh, is there some kind of secret location that's been escaping the, the eye and, and ears of all of the naturalists in the country for many years that's just rife with seed eaters? Um, that's where they're all coming from, right? So, you know, one must wonder is 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 a law making a loophole then to allow wildlife trafficking by just by allowing the trade in, in seed eating birds during certain months of the year right and now what i also must make mention of is that the law speaks nothing to, to animal welfare right the law says nothing about specifying what kind of uh, cages that the birds must be kept in nothing like that Right, how many birds must be kept in a cage? Nothing. All right, and uh, you know, just on the topic of the wildlife trade, whenever birds arrive here, if it is a, a chest and bird seed finch slash bullfinch or or pico plat or whatever it is, right? Um, yeah, okay. Well, it's imported, and if it is imported, right, the birds that you are getting are going to be one that survived and where the majority um, very likely have died. All right, so uh, next slide, please. So yeah, so what can we do? Uh, we need to trust in science and not hearsay, right? So let's trust the ornithological records and not the man down the road who say it have, it have thousands of robin by heat, all right? Uh, we need to think about how we how we view animals. Uh, you know, in in 2015, a, a court in New Delhi had outlawed the keeping of birds in cages because they they ruled that birds have the fundamental right to fly, right? Um, so these are things that we should consider and you know just like adapt in our own lives. Hey, sometimes we need to think about things a little bit differently. Yeah. We need to ask the difficult questions. If we, we might know a friend or a family member that may have a bird in a cage, and um, we we could probably ask, you know, hey, what what um is is what you are doing? Are you is it for the betterment of the bird? How did the bird get here? Um, is the bird singing because it's happy? Right. This is these are things that we have that we should be doing. Okay. So yeah. So next slide, please. I believe that is it for me. And at this point, I, I hope that I'm, I haven't gone over time too much. It is seven on the dot. Um, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. And at this point, I will welcome any questions.